Hello and welcome to an AGS Inspire Flip Master class. My name is John Tate and I'm Deputy Head Teacher at Ackland Grange School in Middlesbrough. And this video is especially for the 2015 SSAT Achievement Show at Twickenham. What I'm going to be showing you is the main concepts behind some uh, effective questioning whilst also showing you how you can use a flipped learning approach to deliver your professional development. First thing we need to look at in questioning is really how important it is in our lessons. Um, and for me, it's the, really, it's the key driver to good and outstanding learning. But far too often, we pose questions and we give our students very, very little wait time. And the actual research suggests that the average wait time that we give students as teachers when we pose a question is less than one second before we accept a response. And that's absolutely incredible when we think about how much uh, we want the students to think and how deeply we want them to think about their answers. Yet we're happy to accept answers in under a second. So my first tip would be to literally to give your students some wait time to not have their hands in the air straight away and to actually say to them, I'm going to give you a few seconds to think about this. What that does is a few things. First of all, it gets them to think deeply. And secondly, and more importantly, you start to then get, uh, you, know, you, you give more importance to the question because if your students think that you've given them wait time, then it must be a bit more of a difficult question and you, and you really want them to uh, deep, think deeply and you're expecting more of them. And also, you should then start to get uh, higher order uh, thinking skills from the students uh, and you should be able to get uh, answers coming back from the students um, that are far more you know, well thought out uh, and, and, and well constructed in their, in their answers. Okay, the second thing I would advise is a, a no hands up approach and that's to make sure that you are as the teacher in charge of the questioning. It's very easy to, uh, when, we, when we ask a question as a human being, we, we, we obviously want an answer. So what happens is if, you know, when, we, when we go back to default and we, and we return to our normal state, as soon as you ask a question, a student puts their hand up in the air and you tend to want to go to them. What we have in our school is a no hands up approach. You will then decide who you, who you want to answer that question. And it means there's nobody can hide in your classroom. Far too often I see students who think, well, if I don't put my hand up, then I won't be asked. So I just won't bother thinking. As soon as you have a no hands up approach, every single student in your class thinks that they could be picked on. Uh, and it's about that hot seating approach of, well, I'm going to go to you first. And you may decide to then uh, to, to move around the room depending on whether it's a lower order ability question or a higher order ability question and if you've got a mixed ability group who are you going to start with and then who are you going to move to from there. Yeah, thirdly it's uh, think pair share uh, and we've done this uh, you know, very well over the last, over the last few months and, and years and what it's about is literally posing a question giving the students some time to think then to them with their partner talk about their idea um, and then, then potentially share that group or collective idea with either a smaller group or the whole class. What this does, it lets students uh, have the thinking time, but it also lets them start to, to, to speak to their partner or to their neighbour uh, about what they might think. And that, that's great because certainly they, they then start to verbalise their answers uh, and then start to actually talk between them. So again, there's no hiding place. They get a consensus of what they think the answer is. So even if someone hasn't got the answer, they may be able to get the right answer from the person next to them. And when you ask them to share that back with the group, they've already shared it with someone already. So they're far more confident to share their ideas because they've had... Um, somebody sat next to them and said, yeah, I think that as well, and, or, well, I'm not really sure we think. And once they start to get that confidence in, yeah, we think we've got the right answer here, then it's far easier for them to share it to the group rather than you hot-seating them and them thinking, I really don't know the answer and I don't want to say what I think in front of the 30, 30 of my peers here. So the think pair share really develops them, uh, their confidence in their answer before they share it back to the group. The next one uh, is something that we, we, we've trialled and, and had huge success with, which is the ABC of questioning, add, build and contest. And this is where once you have a hands down approach to questioning and you're starting to fire the questioning around and you, you might pick on someone to start with and they give you an answer. It's about not accepting the first answer and having a higher standard uh, and those higher expectations of saying, yeah, that's OK, but that's only a C grade answer. Who can add to this? Who can build on that answer? Or who wants to contest that? Do we think that's right? And using that ABC, you can literally fire your questioning around the room and start to really generate that really fantastic answer that started from potentially a, a, a one word or a one line answer that you might not have really wanted to accept. And suddenly within two, you know, two or three minutes or even just a few seconds, you've bounced it around and you've constructed as a group a fantastic answer. And lastly then, putting this all together, uh, and, and a lot of you watching this have probably uh, have heard of the pause, pause, pounce and bounce. It's really putting it all together. The pause is, I'm going to pose you a question now. The pause is giving them that waiting time. The pouncing is that no hands up 
um, you know, where, where you're going to decide who you're going to go to, and the bouncing is your ABC of right who can add to this, who can build on this, and who can challenge this. So very short and sweet. Um, some some of my, you know my top tips for questioning there, and uh, I look forward to uh, to seeing you at the achievement show. If you come into my session, we'll be talking about the questioning. We'll be talking about what we've seen in the video, and I'll be then showing you uh, how you can use that in in your own professional development in the school if you're going to lead that. Um, and we'll you know, we'll really kind of I'll model that, and you'll see what it's been like from watching the video to being in the session. Thank you very much.